you asked for it, we're gonna do it in this video. I'm gonna show you how I edit my Fuji files for Instagram, my street style. We're gonna go over everything, how it all works. Here are some of the photos that I'll be editing, just three of them, just to kind of give a good example of the workflow and how I, I would approach it. Quick disclaimer, I use Lightroom from Adobe to edit all my photos, but fear not, the principle should translate quite easily. So don't worry about it. Whatever editing system you've got, we'll make it work. So the first thing I do when I import my photos into Lightroom is apply a generic adjustment. And the way I do that is by creating a little preset. And what this allows me to do is apply my film simulation of my choice. 90% of the images that I shoot, I use classic Chrome. However, when shooting raw, unfortunately it's not applied straight away. So we need to apply that first. So if you follow me along, we're gonna select classic Chrome and we're gonna scroll down to sharpening. I'm just gonna do a basic one here, but if you wanna see a bit more in depth, there's a link up above that talks about the Fuji worms and how I deal with that. But for now, we're just gonna do 70% sharpening. And if you hold down the Alt key and move masking along, you'll see that around 30 to 40 is a good point for me to kind of give a base for all the photos. That's kind of what I like to do. And this is just a quick way just to kind of save a bit of time because I'll be applying this to pretty much every photo anyway. And now that's kind of done. We want this to apply to all the images. We're gonna go up to the top. We're gonna go to presets, hit the little plus icon. I'm just gonna name this generic adjustments just so I can remember it later. And there you have it. With a click of a button, this will apply to it. And then we can select, drag along to all the other images, hit sync, and that will go across the board to all the images. So let's say you did a wedding or a long shoot. Now you have a basic start for all of them. They're all consistent. And there you go. A quick disclaimer, I really don't believe in selling like full blown presets which are gonna change your image completely. I think that those kind of presets are for a set of photos. So if you have a wedding that's like a really going for a strong look, you'll apply it for that. But I'd much rather bring value by teaching you how to make your own presets. So just wanna get that out of the way. Next thing that I like to do when I'm working with my photos, just to kind of help me out is Within Lightroom, the default setting for the background when editing your photos is kind of dark and it's kind of a gray. As you notice, I'm using a white background. Now, the reason why I do that is to kind of help me match my light points in the photo. Usually before when I'm editing, if you spend a few hours looking at it, it looks fine and then you import it to your mobile phone. It just doesn't, it looks a bit muddy. So what the white border allows me to achieve is to differentiate between the light highlights and the exposure between the dark parts of the image. And usually when I bring it to my mobile phone after, it looks much better. It kind of, it pops. Whatever I'm trying to focus on in the image now pops. So try it out. Let me know if it works for you. Next up, we're gonna crop our images four by five vertical. Now the reason why we do this is purely for the real estate. Usually on Instagram, it kind of promotes you to upload in a square format. However, if you do four by five, you get a little bit more real estate. So once people are scrolling through and you see your image, yours is taking up a bit more room, a bit more eye catch. And yeah, see how it works for you. Let me know if it works for you. Next up, we're gonna be working on our shadows and our highlights. And we're just gonna use some of these images as an example to kind of show you how I achieved that. So as you've noticed, I like to kind of shoot underexposed. And the reason why is because later I can get a bit more dynamic range and preserve my highlights. So first up, we're just gonna adjust this, bring the highlights down, up the shadows, look at the white points, and remember, hit Alt to kind of alter and see how the white points look. You don't want to blow out too much, but just a little bit of clipping is fine. Maybe check the blacks, but however, I wouldn't usually crush the blacks when using Classic Chrome. I find that Classic Chrome is already quite a punchy contrast. It already brings down all the darks. So maybe leave it alone if you're using Classic Chrome, but see how it feels, up to you. And we can go down and you already done your sharpening. So we're all good there. Happy days. Now, the next step is to kind of create a bit more of a focal point using directional light. As you can see, with the photos that I've taken, there is a bit of directional light and we want to accentuate that. The way we accentuate that is by getting our brush, scrolling down to the size, feather, flow, and density. I like to use 80 for all of them, except for size, bring it down a bit, and brush in the light, just to kind of 
accentuate it, bring a bit more punch, bring a bit more emphasis to it. I really, really love Caravaggio paintings and it's kind of like my early painting days back in high school and how it translates into my editing workflow in Lightroom. I find it very therapeutic to kind of brush the light on, do a bit of dodge and burning. Be careful not to do too much. I know we're gonna use 0 0.60. We're just gonna do it by layer, so it's not gonna be too much. We're just gonna gradually do it. If you feel a bit adventurous, I would recommend maybe adding a bit more warmth to it and see how that works for you. These are the results from doing it for these photos. As you can see, they look pretty, pretty more punchy now, a bit more pop of the directional light added. And if you wish, you can now toggle your white balance. And this is the reason why I prefer not to use major presets, just have a basic adjustment and we can tweak everything afterwards. We can go for every image and just go through the little tweaks and make sure everything's okay. Hope you enjoyed my little workflow. It's just a basic one, nothing too intricate. Just going through the start to finish. Usually I shoot on my lunch break, on my way to work. I usually have my camera with me. I'll go home, edit my photo, select the best ones. And this is the day to day of what I do. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. If you wanna see some of the photos in the video, check out my Instagram. Next week, we'll probably look into how to shoot handheld and I will see you bloody next week. Hey, so you made it to the end of the video. I just want to let you know that the photos that I put on the video, they're in a download link in the description box below. So if you wanna test it out, play around with those images, feel free, use the raw files, have fun.